Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. At a recent club meeting, a, a fellow club member brought in a piece of honey locust, a branch, and uh, after talking about it, he gave it to me. We didn't know exactly what to do with it because it's just a limb. It's not that big. Uh, so can it be a bowl? Or what sort of spindle would you make out of it? It's green wood. Uh, it has some wormholes in it. So, well, after a bit, I decided to try and make a limb bowl from this honey locust. Now, and originally I tried to save the bark so that it could be a natural bark edge, but enough turned off because of, look at all these wormholes in it. Some of them still have sawdust in them. It'll eventually fall out. But, uh, so, let's make this little limb bowl out of this honey locust. This wood is a branch from a honey locust tree. A fellow club member brought it to club meeting and gave it to me. We discussed what to turn from it. Initially, I was thinking of a bird's beak bowl, but this is such nice wood that I want to flatten it out. I cut off a piece of the branch that I thought would be big enough to make a nice limb bowl. I'm mounting it to a spur center on the spindle. I'm doing my best to center it to the circumference and center it to the length. Then cinch it up really good. I've turned up the RPMs pretty good, it is fairly balanced, despite it being a limb. I'm approaching it with my large bowl gouge. There is no other tool that I would consider for this type of project. The bowl gouge is the only tool that can stand up to cutting this much air and intermittent contact with the wood. I'm starting by cutting from the live center out. This is side grain and the wood is still green so the wood cuts away nicely. As I get under the bark, I notice both open and filled wormholes. Filled wormholes are filled with, what else? Worm poop. That's okay, some of the best bowls have wormholes. I've measured my chuck jaws and transferred the measure for the tenon. I'm now only transferring the measure with the lathe off. There is simply too much risk the point with the point touching method. I make the mark, extend the line around the wood, then remeasure to see if I got close enough. Much safer this way, but I'll cut the tenon later. I'm continuing to extend the outer curve to the tips. I'm aiming for a continuous gradual curve. With the length I've selected, I get a gradual flat curve. If the bowl were shorter, the curve would be sharper then I'd call it a bird's beak. Finally, cut a tenon and blend it to the exterior curve. Originally, I had intended to try to keep the bark for a bark edge, but enough of the bark has torn off that this will be a live edge bowl without bark. I think the bark came off because of the abundance of wormholes just under the bark. Now that the bowl is reversed into a chuck, I'm keeping the live center in place. Especially with the irregular bowl, the live center is essential to secure the wood. I will not turn without it in place for as long as possible. This is a fun hollowing task. I use a standard hollowing cut from the rim inwards, but when I want to remove a lot of wood, I turn the gouge around to hog out the wood. But I always stop short of the target and switch back to the standard cut for the final cuts.
the green wood will flex more than a round bowl just from centrifugal force. So I want to try and finish the outer portion first, then move to the next third. Finally, I need to cut the final section. I removed the life center. It is fun to tool off that center nub. Don't know why, but it is. For the final cuts to the biddle, I like to switch to a heavy bowl scraper. I just cannot take it back out to the rim without risking a bad catch. Next, I'll power sand it with the lathe off, starting with 60 grit. With all that air wood, I have a lot to sand. There is no way I can reverse to turn the foot. Well, there is a way, but why not carve it off for this one? I chose a likely oval-ish rasp bit and have at it. I'm taking off the entire tenon, then sand the foot area again. After signing, I'm giving this beautiful bowl a bath in walnut oil. Since it is green, it could warp, but who would notice? More particularly, who would care? Sometimes I like warp, sometimes I don't. This one will be a conversation starter. Is that a bowl? You turned that bowl? How? This one is weird enough to be a great one. I'll turn almost anything. Now let's see if this bowl can do a new trick. It can roll over and right itself. I've never seen a bowl do that, so here's a bowl that can do a new trick. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, tell your friends, and send me your comments and questions. Every week, I make a new wood turning video and add it to the over 400 videos to choose from on my website. Eight years worth. But please, always wear your full face shield anytime the lathe is running. Until next week's video, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns.